So imagine traveling over 380,000 kilometers from home and only being able to explore a few meters from your airplane seat. That's something the Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin encountered in their historic 1969 mission to the lunar surface. During their 21 hour and 36 minute stay on the moon, the two astronauts only traveled about 90 meters from their Eagle lander, collecting small samples for their return to Earth. Now let's fast forward 50 years where NASA's Artemis program is looking to travel up to 10,000 kilometers with the next generation of lunar vehicles. In July 2020, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and NASA formed the Joint Exploration Declaration of Intent, or JEDI. Needless to say, we think the force will be pretty strong with this lunar rover. In order to design this new lunar rover, scientists and engineers are looking to learn lessons from the past with goals of creating a vehicle that could go further be more energy efficient, and adapt to the unknown lunar terrain. The very first lunar vehicle to be utilized was the Lunar Roving Vehicle, or LRV for short, in 1971. But you might also know it as the Moon Buggy, named for its design similarities to a Dune Buggy. This four-wheel aluminum alloy, unpressurized electric vehicle was built in just 17 months and cost approximately $38 million. Having a way for astronauts to move safely around the lunar surface and return to their lander quickly was a huge leap forward. This vastly helped to extend the exploration radius allowing Apollo 15 astronauts to travel over 27 kilometers, which is way more than the Apollo 11 astronauts. But at the end of their rides, they still had to return to a pressurized environment. And having access to a place where you're allowed to breathe is obviously a major factor in determining the exploration range for any astronaut. That limitation, coupled with the fact that the OG moon buggy just wasn't that durable, meant that NASA had to rethink the rover. In the late 2000s, NASA proposed a concept for a futuristic space vehicle known as a Lunar Electric Rover, or LER. It was set to be the first pressurized six-wheel omni-drive lunar vehicle, enabling astronauts to go on longer research exploration missions. It was customized with a mobile workspace and other really cool features like a shower and a suit port which allow astronauts to get in their spacesuits from inside the vehicle. This was implemented because lunar surface contamination was a real issue in the Apollo program and sometimes dust could damage the instruments or even get into the astronaut's lungs. The LER prototype made a public appearance at the Obama inauguration as well as performed several test runs in the Arizona desert. It seemed to hit everything we were looking for. Distance, energy efficiency, and adaptability. However, the LER never actually made it to the moon the program was canceled in 2010 as a part of the larger Constellation program because of delays and overspending. Now let's start talking about the new and improved vision from JEDI. Not only does this agreement bring two major players to the table, but it also describes the plans for both Lunar Gateway and Lunar Surface Exploration. This is an absolutely huge accomplishment considering JAXA has already begun developing a self-driving, pressurized lunar rover with the help of a major car company. Surprisingly, I'm not talking about Tesla. Instead, Toyota is helping us ditch the concept of inflatable tents and underground bases as we look at pressurized mobile space vehicles. The brand new rover, nicknamed the Lunar Cruiser, looks like the first pressurized space Winnebago and will help us explore new parts of the moon. According to JAXA, this massive six-wheeled vehicle will be crewed by two astronauts, but will be able to fit four in the case of an emergency. And unlike the moon buggy, which utilized two 36-volt batteries to zip around the moon, the Lunar Cruiser will pack some serious power by utilizing fuel cells, allowing crews to explore the lunar surface for up to 14 days, with a maximum range of 10,000 kilometers. Some early concepts have even shown the Cruiser with a large roll-up solar panel for some additional power. Although Jackson and Toyota are mainly relying on simulations and concept data right now, their plan is to work toward a full-scale prototype by late 2021 with the hopes of launching a flight model in the latter half of the 2020s. Even though we currently don't know a whole lot about the new Lunar Cruiser outside a few amazing concept drawings and some simulation data, this next generation lunar vehicle could revolutionize off-world exploration as we know it. Like this episode? Well, subscribe to Seeker for all your latest lunar mission news. And if you want to know more about space exploration, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Seeker.